Anyway, it ends up over here in my palette. Well, one thing I noticed that you have this girl up there at the top. You said you found her somewhere in the garage <laughs> or something. She's a yard sale girl. I bought her for I think a quarter or something, and I thought she was pretty, so I put her up there to smile at me every day, <laughs> and I don't see anything wrong with that. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> this is old Jake. No, no, no. That's uh, my little horsey chamois, Shatir. He uh, won uh, every Arabian horse show that we ever entered him in. As a matter of fact, I'm telling his life story now, writing it all down, some of the things we did together, and they're pretty pretty cool. What was the horse's name again? Shammy, I called him. Mm -hmm. My little horsey, he answered to either one. I had him so that he was voice command, so I could take the bridle off and just tell him what I wanted, and he'd do it. He would walk, trot. I could nudge my knees in just a little bit and say, go get him, and just whisper it. And boy, he's, he's a five-speed. He'd go into a rocking horse gallop. Mm -hmm. Just fun to ride at that gallop, and he liked to do that. And then I'd say, go get him, and phew, off like a streak. Mm -hmm. And could go all day long. Yeah, I'd never seen a horse with such endurance. It was a real pleasure to own that horse. I got him when he was uh, a year old from Andy Williams, uh, the singer. And uh, I traded a painting. You come out of Andy Williams' stables, I should say. The people had that owned him actually got him from Andy Williams, and I traded for him from them. <laughs> wow. Well. kind of nuts, but... Anyway, uh, it was fun. I could tell, talk all day long about my horse. We had some pretty exciting moments at times. We tipped over upside down in one of the big springs down in the canyon. Most horses would kick and scream and you'd, we'd have both been down there still probably because it's really remote and uh, I calmed him right down held his head out of the water and I got my pocket knife out I still hooked underneath him because of the saddle and I cut the saddle cinch all cut with my pocket knife and so the saddle was off of him and I grabbed his feet and just kind of twisted him around as good as I could I mean he was in the water which made it a lot easier but all of his weight was on me. So it was, anyway, he scrambled right on out and stood up there and shook himself off. And I climbed out and shook myself off and cleaned my pants out. That that was a close call. I could have gone real bad. But he was like that. Any other horse would have, like I say, kicked me to death. And here this little guy just took me to new heights. And there he is immortalized in the painting, right? He trained so that my black lab, Charlie Black, would jump and run up and jump on the back and ride with me. We'd go up the hill, and we went. I rode that horse every day for, even in the winter time when I was breaking him, and then I'd take him up on the Salmon River, where my cabin is at Shoop. It's very, very remote in the wilderness. And one time we were, I could well let me tell you first about the grouse. I had him trained so that I could shoot off his back, and the way I did that was to take newspapers out every day when I was breaking him and rattle them all up and make his eyes get big and he thinks he's going to die. And then you rub that newspaper all over him until he's comfortable and he sees that newspaper isn't going to hurt him. Hmm. So that works out pretty good. And then I would take a 22 out and every time he'd start eating oats or something, just he wouldn't see me, I'd shoot that gun never over his head or his ever, but off to the side and he'd jump back and then I'd do it again and he'd jump back and probably about the 10th time the first day he would settle down a little bit and I just kept doing it until it didn't bother him a bit. Then he started out what we were doing. So fast forward to when we were at the cabin. I can remember in the evening going up the cabin. The grouse were just thick along this little hollow. Uh, and we followed the trail. My black lab dog would go out and scare them and they'd either fly up in a tree because they were fool hens. I'd shoot him the bird had hit the ground, the bird dog would go get pick up the bird and bring it back to me and hand it to my saddle, put it in my bag and never even have to get off my horse. <laughs> and you always see things in movies about cowboys shooting people off of a horse and shooting off of a horse. Well, let me tell you, that's there's pretty rare horses you can shoot off their back, but I trained him to. 
Anyway, uh, I remember one time actually shooting a four-point buck off of his back sitting in the saddle. And I, it was even then difficult, uh, you know, but we did it. And we drug that horse out, the lariat with the horns and deep snow, and it was really fun. Oh, man, those, those memories are really priceless. They're just fun. Those were good days, huh? Great days. Yeah. Two black labs and my horse, and later on I got a second horse, and I took her too. But me and him was up riding one day with my black lab. Seems like I had two of them. Right on through, uh, we were on a really steep mountain on a really narrow trail, and ran right smack into a nest of rattlesnakes. And I had snakes everywhere around me, and I had my shotgun with me. So I pulled it out of the scabbard and shot one right between his legs and he never flinched and shot another one up there and there was another one back behind us. The dog somehow had got through there and never been bit. I don't know, he must have shook them up or something because they were all out on the trail when we got there. But That was wow. pretty exciting. But there again, any other horse around a rattlesnake would have gone nuts and jumped off the cliff. But my horse trusted me so much in anything that I did that it was... We were just like one, almost. It was really, really cool to get that way with an animal. Just not even like a gated horsey.